सिस्टर इंग्लिश पोएट्री क्लास आई एम वर्किंग एज ए लेक्चर इन वन ऑफ द डिग्री कॉलेजेस इफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम विथ माई वॉइस और माई वे ऑफ एक्सप्लेनेशन प्लीज लेट मी नो थ्रू सेंडिंग मैसेजेस yeah good afternoon uh, i am sharing my screen with you all this is of uh, english poetry just in order to concentrate on uh, the the ppt i am switching off my camera please try to understand are you able to look at the ppt are you able to look at my ppt yes ma'am thank you so this is english poetry your fourth semester uh, in today's class uh, we are going to talk about what is poetry especially before to that what is literature actually and after understanding what is literature then we will have a description of poetry and then characteristics of poetry these are all the basic informations we are going to discuss today and what are the themes of poetry what are the forms of poetry what are the periods of literature overall and then what is the origin of poetry shall i move on yes sir what is literature first so literature all of us know it is a portrayal of something so through writing any author can display can talk about the life of somebody or the place of something some place or some uh, incident or some situation etc then all together we can consider literature is nothing but a picture of life so through which we are going to understand what is there in that life who are the people we are talking about what happened in those people's life etc etc got it then it is also an expression of emotions and ideas or ideals so through this uh, literature the author is going to talk about the emotions of somebody or the 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 ideas what the author wants to share the ideals what he wants to instruct right then literature must be universal in nature it is like uh, it is going to uh, be acceptable for all the people of all the areas that means literature is not of one particular place it is of the world means the emotions are equal to every human being applicable to all or the ideas what we share along with the others is common and the ideals we present or we preach there are necessary for all of us right then what are the forms of writing form is nothing but the way we are presenting it in which we are conveying something so here we have four major forms of writing those are poetry prose drama and fiction so we can't say which is the first one 
between pro poetry and prose. If it is written uh, at the earliest times in a plain language, it is called as prose. When it was written in the form of uh, verse, V-E-R-S-E, then we consider it as poetry. So these two are the first and foremost forms of writing. Later, by combining poetic language with the prose presentation, drama comes into limelight. So in that way, drama existed after over a period of time. Then fiction is a very later development in the field of literature. So in that way, we have four major forms. Of course, we have subcategories of writings here. Uh, various uh, uh, fictional stories, science fiction, short stories, etc., etc. In drama, we have comedy, tragedy, tragic comedy, etc. And in poems, various types of writings. In even prose, various forms of writing, we have subcategories. Those are all. So, in this uh, forms of writing, we are concentrating especially in this semester poetry. So, poetry can be defined in various ways by various authors of uh, literature. So no one particular definition is enough to describe correctly about uh, poetry. Means uh, we can't stick to one particular definition. So that is the reason why I have included here the description of poetry instead of a definition because when we are talking about our definition, we need to mention the person there. So no one particular author or no one particular definition gives all the complete meaning of a poetry. So that is the reason why just I have added the description. What is poetry? So instead of definition, we can consider this as what is poetry? So poetry is a type of literature. That means it is a form of writing. So when we are doing something, when we are writing something, it must have a, an outcome, a result. That means in order to achieve that outcome, it aims at an emotional response from the reader. Means when a poem was written in order to... Uh, uh, evoke in order to inculcate a kind of emotion in the reader through its language with the help of that language what the poem poet are uh, is using there through that language he can achieve that emotional response in the reader and this language must be chosen one we can't write with, with the help of uh, just like that words we have to be very careful while selecting the words there. So that is the reason why poetic language is a chosen language. Whereas prose is a plain language. And that language means nothing but words are arranged in the form of, in a particular form to get proper meaning to it. So when those words are selected, the, the poet must arrange them to get some meaning to those words and some music, some rhythm, particular pattern. So when poetry was written, it must include all these things. With the help of language, the poet is going to get emotional response. And by arranging them for a meaning, he makes that particular poem for, uh, as a comprehensible one. By adding that sound and music to that, by uh, giving that rhythmic pattern to, to that, it becomes like a song. It can be recited. It can be sung. So in that way, poetry can be described. Then poetry is imaginative and emotional interpretation of life. What does it mean? Poetry includes imagination. Poet, while presenting with the help of a narrator or the speaker or a character, he gives a kind of uh, idea to the reader to imagine something. So at the same time, when he is listening to a poem, when he is reading a poem, when he is 
uh, understanding a poem, uh, th that particular reader gets some emotional response. So in that way, poetry is imaginative and emotional interpretation of life means we, we are going to imagine, we are going to uh, have that emotional understanding of life. For example, if it is a love poem, when the author is presenting something, some feeling to its, his beloved, so there the reader is going to understand it or apply it to his own life. Then poetry deals with the facts, means reality, where imagination contradicts. So imagination can be real or false, but still poetry deals with facts, known things, acceptable things. And poetry deals with experiences of people, experiences of societies, experiences of souls even. And poetry deals with the problems of life. So in that way, poetry is a perfect example for one of the forms of writing. That is, uh, I mean, poetry is a, a particular uh, form of writing through which the, the, the main aim of li writing literature can be achieved. Means literature, in the previous slide, we have understood already, literature is nothing but portrayal of life. That means life is having uh, or filled with the facts, experiences, and even problems. So in that way, poetry presents everything in the form of a song. Then what are the characteristics of poetry? So poetry is a composition. That means a writing. The poet is composing something through which he expresses his ideas or feelings. Ideas means the, the poet, what he wants to convey there, what he wants to tell to his reader and what feelings he has in his mind, in his heart, etc. So in that way, poetry is a composition of expression of ideas and feelings in the form of lines, not in a plain language, not in the form of dialogue, etc., but in the form of lines. Then poetry tends to have regular rhythmic patterns. So without this rhythmic pattern, without these musical sounds, we can't call it as poetry. And then poetry usually makes use of carefully chosen words. So already we discussed that. Poetry makes use of carefully chosen words. Author, while writing or a poet, while composing his poem, he very carefully selects his words and through which he conveys his idea or feeling. As well as poetry makes use of figures of speech through which it can be beautiful, which becomes through the language as well as beautification, ornamentation to that language, poetry becomes beautiful. Then it is often divided into, it is related to structure, it is often divided into stanzas. So in that way, we can call, because of all these features, we can call that particular form of writing, that particular composition as poetry. Then what are the elements of uh, poetry? So while talking about that particular ideal or idea or feeling or emotion, whatever it is, we call it as theme. Theme is nothing but the major topic or the central topic of that particular text, that particular piece of writing. So themes can be divided into two categories. Actually, we can discuss it later. And then authorial or textual background means 
while writing author directly or indirectly willingly or unwillingly introduces his own impression his own bias his own feeling to that particular text for example if an author is strong so strong at his feeling for example mourning towards the death of a particular person so that personal feeling is conveyed through the text and textual background while writing the author as well as the text particular text is having its own background then subject matter so subject matter is uh, it links with the theme the matter as well as the manner matter means in which topic is discussing regarding what he is talking about for example it may be love it may be uh, rage it may be anger it may be something else whatever feeling he is composing that is nothing but subject matter and then meter meter is nothing but the the pattern of writing the structure of writing and then rhythm rhythm as well as meter are interdependent then figures of speech as you know figures of speech is another uh, uh, phrase which modifies the particular piece of work it adds beauty to that particular piece of writing with the help of similes there are number of uh, figures of speech uh, we can discuss while dealing with individual texts and tone tone is nothing but in which voice he is talking about is is he emotionally strong or weak or intense deep in his uh, heart etc mood mood is nothing but the emotional state tone is nothing but the voice it is related to the selection of words mood is related to the feeling internal mood cannot be visible it cannot be visible clearly whereas tone is clearly visible so in that way in which tone in a dull tone he is talking or in an active tone he is talking in a very intense emotional mood he is talking or in a very plain or uh, in a very sinful uh, kind of uh, mood he is talking so in that way we can consider these as the elements of poetry then the themes so themes of poetry can be these in general i am telling love can be the theme of a particular poem for example we have number of texts here in our syllabus we'll discuss it later then death most of the times when the author or the poet has been in a pessimistic mood in a very hopeless condition there they talk about death they select death as their theme some poets concentrate on the beauty of the world that is nothing but nature nature becomes the theme of a particular piece of writing then beauty beauty of any object or any setting or any person or any mind even sometimes so that also becomes a theme and dream dream is nothing but the the poet when he wants to escape from the realities of life when he wants to be away from the problems of life so there he selects imaginative kind of uh, feeling so that is nothing but the dream then desire desire is one of the themes of writing especially poetry through which the poet conveys what he wants to achieve what he wants to convey then friendship becomes a theme celebration celebration of a festival or celebration of sometimes mind becomes celebration of life becomes a theme of poetry and then animals we have uh, uh, ted hughes animal poet so animals uh, be a theme of poetry then sometimes 
good versus evil becomes the theme. War, particular incident, the loss uh, due to that war becomes the theme. Then courage will be a theme. Travel, travel uh, experiences becomes a theme. It is nothing but journey. And disappointment becomes a theme. So these are some of the known uh, general themes elected by, selected by different poets. Then, what are the forms of poetry? These are the subcategories of poetry through which we divide which kind of writing it is actually. We have number of uh, categories of poems. So, forms of uh, poetry is divided majorly into two, narrative poetry as well as lyrical poetry. So when we take narrative poetry as one of the uh, uh, forms of writing, forms of uh, uh, poetry, so there the poet is narrating the story of somebody, story of some place or story of a unknown hero. Then it is completely impersonal. Narrative poetry doesn't have any uh, personal feelings of that particular poet. Whereas lyrical poetry is personal poetry. Means the poet includes his personal impressions, opinions, feelings in that particular work. Lyrical poetry is personal poetry. Narrative poetry is impersonal poetry. So, subcategories of narrative poetry are the epic and the ballad. So, epic uh, is the story of a great hero of from our uh, uh, myths, uh, from our uh, religion, etc. Ballad is, of course, it is the story of a hero, but uh, not so great or known one like then lyr lyrical poetry is divided actually lyric will be one of, one of, one of the sub categories of this particular kind lyric is just a song then ode is a particular uh, presentation through which the author addresses somebody or something elegy is nothing but a mournful poem so Regarding the loss of somebody or something, the poet is conveying his grief, his feeling, his pessimistic thought through the work. Then the sonnet. Sonnet is a special kind of poetry uh, in, in, the, in its uh, form, in its structure, in its uh, subject matter, in its even theme. Then dramatic monologue is another kind, very specific in its uh, nature, through which we uh, can consider uh, that dramatic monologue as a special kind of poetry. Yes, Ma, this is of uh, fourth semester. So these are the particular forms of poetry. Then these are the periods of literature. I am not going into the detail. Uh, anyway, video will be uploaded. So there you can understand what are the uh, periods of literature. So based on this, uh, there is a specific uh, way of presentation, specific uh, way of writing at uh, different ages. Then, what is the origin of poetry? Just uh, open your book. English poetry, num Roman number four. So in that you have the introduction part. From tomorrow onwards, 
for each class you need to keep your book ready before the class so introduction to british poetry that means origin of poetry where it began where it took birth so in this origin we are going to discuss what was the actual particular first work of work related to poetry so here we have an example him h y m n him is nothing but a song especially religious song written by hedman so this is considered as a him cadman's him is considered as one of the short old english poems attributed to means written by cadman he would be an illiterate and the poem would be unmusical actually he was like uh, uh, the one who uh, uh, takes care of uh, cows so just in order to praise the god or the creator he could write this hymn then we have an anonymous work beowulf so it is considered as great epic of uh, literature oldest epic written in a gen uh, written about germanic hero heroic legend in 3182 lines the author of this uh, uh, epic beowulf is unknown but this work is much more important and most often translated works of old english literature the authorship is unknown then we have 14th century means 1300 to 1399 we call it as 14th century so we consider geoffrey chaucer as one of the pioneers of english poetry we call him as the father of english poetry so after him after geoffrey chaucer there is a, there was a, a vacuum until the beginning of 16th century 1500s that means so that is the reason why i did not keep anything here in 15th century then in 16th century the literature the birth of literature gradually came into limelight so renaissance helped us to develop our own works then we have here thomas wyatt one of the earliest english renaissance poets he was responsible for many innovations in english poetry he introduced the sonnet uh, form to english literature so that is the reason why he is considered as the pioneer of renaissance period then we can call uh, elizabethan period as uh, the renaissance we can these two periods are overlap on each other so this is the origin of poetry so i am not discussing everything here please try to read and understand what is written in the book then in block 1 we have authors belongs to elizabethan age metaphysical poetry and age of reason just to see the index here in block 1 we are going to talk about what are the features of writing of elizabethan age in which manner the authors of that particular period uh, wrote and metaphysical poetry school of thought what are the particular characteristic features of metaphysical poetry and what is the the meaning of age of reason and who are the exponents of this particular block then block 2 is talking about romantic age in which we are going to discuss william wordsworth phoebe shelley and john keats and their 
prescribed works. Then what is Victorian age? What are the characteristics of Victorian period? Then Alfred Lord Tennyson and Robert Browning as the exponents of Victorian period. And then block three is going to talk about the irrespective of uh, periods, 20th century literature, because the 20th century after 1901, 1900 onwards, we have major developments in the field of literature. So we, we can't separate that particular timeline into periods. We call them as modern period and postmodern. So I'm giving together the title 20th century literature in which we are going to talk about W.B. Yeats, T.S. Eliot and Ted Hughes. So I, uh, I did not include block four and five because they are not part of English literature. They are not part of British literature. They are of another particular uh, literature, Af American, uh, Canadian, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the reason why I did not include. Then in block one, in order to understand William Shakespeare as well as Elizabethan period, we need to focus first on Renaissance period. So what is this Renaissance period? Renaissance period is nothing but a particular period of uh, the world in which so many things, so much of improvement took place. So Renaissance period is also called as Elizabethan period because both of them are overlapping on each other. Then it is also called as the age of Shakespeare. So Renaissance means revival of learning. Learning has been given priority, but once again, after Renaissance, after the, uh, the birth of Renaissance, there is a revival of learning. This Renaissance denotes the gradual enlightenment of human mind after the darkness of the Middle Ages. So see the, the, the periods of writing here where the Middle Ages stopped and where Renaissance began. So gradual enlightenment of the human mind happened in this period. Then the fall of Constantinople allowed the people to explore knowledge, spread the knowledge all over Europe. Then out of that knowledge, new discoveries took place in the world. Then Elizabethan period. So without this Elizabethan period, open your block one ma. Without this Elizabethan period, we can't understand what is the style of writing of Shakespeare and what uh, the prescribed poems mean. So what are the characteristics of Elizabethan period? So in this, the Renaissance and the Reformation, that means the Renaissance is nothing but the revival of learning. And the Reformation means another birth, rebirth. So these two are blended and cooperated each other. These two movements produced a great upliftment of uh, the spirit of human and the Renaissance aroused intellectual and aesthetic faculties means Renaissance due to the spreading of the knowledge all over Europe allowed the people to get intellectual upgradation and aesthetic improvement. Then Reformation awakened the spiritual nature of human beings. So in that way, Elizabethan period, with the help of Renaissance and Reformation, excelled in its time. Then new learning, new learning opened the world. Out of that spreading of knowledge, new learning took place. People started consulting various books, various informations. Then the particular period, Elizabethan period is the period of the spirit of adventure. Means the people started exploring the world by sailing, by taking risks, by traveling 
by a journey, by having a journey to the unknown places. So in that way, Elizabethan period is uh, uh, known as the, the period of adventure. And uh, the atmosphere, an atmosphere of peace, order, and prosperity. The people were expecting to have a peace of life and order in their life and prosperity, becoming a due to new learning, due to uh, journeys, due to explorations, various discoveries took place. And development of trade and commerce, due to that travel, they came to know about various things, various people, various locations, various trade and commerce uh, related to that. And then education. Education was given much priority at that moment. Education in not only academics, in all the fields. And in that way, due to that education, drama came into existence and it flourished throughout Elizabethan period. Then, pomp and show and other evils means people started becoming so possessive and showing off their knowledge, their wealth, their uh, energy, etc. So then uh, what are these other uh, evils? Black magic. Black magic and witchcraft had been becoming uh, habits of people. So in that way, other evils also introduced to the world. Then religious tolerance. This particular period allowed people to have their own religion. Religious freedom was given to the public. Then William Shakespeare as a pioneer of Elizabethan period. And often he is called as national poet. Read carefully about the information given here. William Shakespeare in block one. The introduction of Elizabethan period as well as William Shakespeare. Uh, just uh, I have added uh, some of the titles, some of the names of uh, other names of William Shakespeare, titles of William Shakespeare. He has been considered as a national poet and uh, he has been regarded as, as a bard of Avon. Then he wrote poems. He has been called as poet, dramatist as well as an actor. Means he played roles on stage. Then his works. He wrote poems. Around 154 sonnets he wrote. We have sonnet number 116 in our syllabus. We are going to discuss it tomorrow. Then he wrote three long narrative poems. Then few minor poems not having so uh, so much importance and then he wrote all together 39 plays majorly comedies tragedies histories so here we have some of the examples in our uh, book so try to differentiate what are the comedies what are the tragedies what are the histories and he also wrote some uh, problematic plays and this is his particular style of writing, conventional style of the day. That means which kind of style follow, was followed at that moment. Conventional means traditional. Traditional style of writing of that today. Uh, he began writing in that way. Later, he dared to experiment with the style. Then when it comes to poetry, he took a verse form. That is blank verse. Blank verse doesn't need any uh, rhythmic pattern, any stanza pattern. It is written in, in its own uh, uh, format. So that he selected. This is all about Shakespeare. Tomorrow we are going to discuss about uh, uh, sonnet number 116.
and the other poem as well as other authors and if possible uh, we, we try to finish it block 2 uh, otherwise sum of block 2 uh, do you have any doubts ma regarding this no ma'am okay uh, just uh, somebody asked me repeat the the definition of poet poem ma it is yes madam yes okay i am going back to the first slide okay okay, okay. once again i'll repeat try okay, to madam. take a screenshot otherwise try to have a photo anyway uh, uh, university people are going to upload this uh, ppt there you okay, can madam. understand okay, okay. so this is the beginning slide english poetry 4 means fourth semester then English poetry. So what we have discussed so far in all the slides. Then what is literature? The basic information, what we need. And this is the definition. It is not a proper definition. It is just a description. Definitions are plenty. Especially okay. definitions of poetry are number of by different authors, by different uh, poets especially even different critics. So it is impossible for us to include all those definitions. And even it is uncomfortable or it is not uh, uh, authentic to, to depend on one particular definition. That is the reason why it is just a description of what is poetry. Got it, ma? Okay, okay, ma'am. Then characteristics of poetry we have included. Then elements of poetry, themes of poetry, forms of poetry, periods of literature, not poetry, periods of literature. Okay, okay, madam. Then origin of poetry. The beginning, the first introduction part of our book. Uh -huh, okay. okay. Uh -huh. Then block one, what are there? Depending on the index, I have prepared this. Then block two, block three. These three blocks come under English poetry or British poetry. Of course, other Af American poetry, Canadian poetry, Australian poetry, other languages also are having English literature, but we call English literature only related to British. So that is the reason why I have included only block three up to. Then Renaissance period, what is Renaissance period? What is Elizabethan period? What are its characteristics? Then who is uh, Shakespeare? What are his details? And uh, what are his works? Then what is his style of writing. Up to this, we have completed and we have detailed uh, information regarding uh, what is sonnet. We'll discuss it tomorrow. Okay, madam. Okay? Okay, okay. Okay. Others, do you have any doubts? No, madam. Shall we wind up the session?